With fall and winter coming, it's a great time to review some of the health benefits linked to sauna bathing and sauna therapy. So in today's video, we're going to talk more about some of these new scientific findings with regards to heat shock proteins, what those are, what they do in terms of longevity and health support lifespan, the cardiovascular supportive benefits linked to regular sauna therapy, detoxification, and some of the considerations if you regularly sauna in terms of repleting, or, uh, you know, sort of replenishing that is some of your depleted minerals like zinc, magnesium, and, and all of that. So we're going to, we will draw upon a paper here titled Sauna as a Lifestyle Practice to Extend Health Span from Rhonda Patrick. Many of you know who Rhonda Patrick is. I'm sure she's already done a video to sort of explain some of these many health benefits. And I will share with you on the screen uh, access to this. It was published in the journal Experimental Gerontology just came out a few days ago. Really fascinating. Now, she summarizes a bunch of, of fascinating uh, scientific studies and articles that we've actually talked about before uh, on this podcast, because many of you know, I started sauna bathing in 2013. Then we bought an infrared sauna. One of the companies that I'll mention here is High Tech Health. We do have an affiliate link, so you can check that in the links below. Why I like them, I will get into shortly, particularly as we talk about the differences between a Finnish sauna and an infrared sauna and sort sort of how long you should stay in which. But uh, as, as I was saying there, I got into sauna bathing in 2013. We bought an inf infrared sauna. And then, you know, during COVID, I decided, you know what, I really want to sort of embrace the classical Finnish experience. And so I've shared with you videos and conversations about how to build your own sauna in your backyard using a wood fired stove because you can pour water over the rocks and create the laoli which is sort of that steam. And I think that offers more of a classical experience. You can get hotter and we can have more people in the sauna. So um, if we talk about infrared sauna or traditional classic finish sauna, or even an electric stove in an outdoor sauna, the benefits are all similar. It's just with the infrared sauna, you have to get in or stay in longer. So, you know, your sessions are usually about 30 to 40 minutes. Whereas you know, if you can do 40 minutes in an hour sauna uh, and you're still alive, like you are a savage because it gets up to like 220 degrees. So anyway, I just want to mention some of that. So check out High Tech Health. They're phenomenal. And if you want to build your own sauna and want to learn from some of the things that I learned through doing this process, I will link that below. So there's been several prospective long-term cohort studies. One of these is a Kiopia uh, ischemic heart disease risk factor study going on in Finland. And what they've showed is, you know, a very significant decreased risk for uh, mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease. I think it was a 65% risk reduction in people who saw on a three to five days a week compared to people who just do one day a week. And there was also a 27% lower risk among men reporting the sauna use in terms of cardiovascular risk disease. So again, two to three days a week. Oftentimes more is not always better, but it seems that in this instance, more is better. Uh, among the men who reported using a sauna between four and seven days a week had a 50% lower risk amongst those men in terms of cardiovascular disease compared to people who just used it one day a week. So there's a lot of benefits here when it comes to sauna therapy. Now, let's talk about the temperature and the duration because this is a question a lot of people want to want to know. As we get into the benefits, we're going to focus on the brain, on the heart, on muscle, and preventing age-related muscle loss and how sauna might help with that. And we're going to talk about some of these details from Dr. Rhonda Patrick's paper. Uh, then we're going to talk about the stress response, heart rate variability, uh, and high blood pressure, all these things. But let's talk about what the questions that I've, I've gotten so many uh, questions about this is, how long do I go in the sauna? Well, um, this is like, well, how long do I exercise? You know, it really is subjective based upon your age your resilience, uh, and what time of the day and how much time you have. Um, I like to recommend to my clients, go in the sauna till you feel uncomfortable. Maybe go another minute or two and then then leave, take a break, and you can go back in. And so this is sort of the, you know, having the contrast is nice, having the ability to go outside. Um, I recommend that because if, if you're in your home, let's say you build an infrared sauna when you, or you buy a pre-assembled one, right? And you, 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 you put it together, um, you go and sit in your room, um, you can release a lot of steam and create moisture that can lead to mold. So I do suggest, you know, if you build a sauna in your house or if you're using one inside, make sure you open up all the windows and everything like that because you can create a mold problem. Um, so that's important. I recommend some sort of contrast. So even going outside, if it's dark out, I, mean, I know there's, you know, raccoons and things like that outside, just get outside, uh, if, even if it's dark and just um, cool yourself down with the ambient outdoor air. Uh, even better if you can take a cold shower, bring down that core temperature because as Dr. Patrick talks about in this article, one of the main mechanisms ascribed to the health benefits of sauna therapy is the, the distribution of blood. So you're taking blood from your core 
and you're moving it away from the core to the periphery of the body to the skin. So blood can move uh, about like 60% of your blood is all redistributed, okay? Now the, contra- the, the inverse happens when you get cold. So that's sort of this, the benefits of the contrast therapy. You're really hot, all your blood is in the periphery, you're sweating, your veins are popping out and all that. You get cold by going into a cold plunge, take a cold shower, stand outside, roll in the snow, whatever it is, and you're redistributing all that blood. So that's beneficial for individuals who have peripheral artery disease and peripheral vascular disease. That's beneficial for people who have, um, you know, uh, diabetic issues and, and poor blood flow. That's beneficial for moving the lymph around. So you're getting contraction of the endothelial uh, lining and, and all of that. So that's some of the benefits there. And, and I think really beneficial, especially if you sit all day or if you travel um, if you had to be sedentary because you have an injury, you know, all these things, um, you, you know, you're stuck at home for whatever reason, um, you can't walk from an injury. That's where sauna can be helpful. I think I always recommend clients exercise and people get out and move and, and at least lift weights or do resistance training three days a week and walk, particularly walk after a meal. But if you don't have exercise, if you don't like exercise, if you've struggled making exercise a habit, the bare minimum you can do is make sauna bathing a habit due to the fact that it mimics the exercise benefits linked with cardiovascular health without actually having to to do the exercise. Now, I say this with caution because I want you to exercise. However, if you just do not like exercise, you hate going to the gym, you don't like doing this, you have hip issues, knee issues, whatever, at least on a bare minimum, go in the sauna. Now, that being said, there are synergistic benefits between the combination of the two. In fact, in this article, as you will see on the screen here, there's benefits within the muscle tissue and reducing atrophy of the muscle due to the dramatic increase in the function of these so-called heat shock proteins. So let's just pause and quickly talk about, you know, in the past, we've characterized the, the seven to nine different hallmarks of aging. So these are, these are hallmarks, mitochondrial dysfunction, aminosenescence. Um, you know, there's a lot of different hallmarks, and we've done all sorts of other videos on that that you can check out recently here in uh, August of 2021. 20, uh, However, one of the hallmarks of aging is loss of proteostasis, loss of control of protein balance within the cells. And what this means, and and of course, you can't look into your cells right now with a commercial assay to see if you have so-called loss of proteostasis, but you might see increases in C-reactive protein. You might see increases in your liver enzymes. You might notice, you know, cloudy thinking, uh, inability to retrieve words, or you kind of stumble in your speech. That could be linked to uh, loss of proteostasis because... It turns out there's this process known as autophagy uh, that we've, we've talked about at length and so on. And uh, age-related declines in autophagy can sort of lead to the accumulation of these aggregated proteins. And it turns out that these heat shock proteins are also involved in maintaining or preventing these accumulation of, of misfolded and dysfunctional proteins. So what the research that Dr. Rhonda Patrick talked about here is various studies have shown about a, 40, a 35 to 45% increase in these heat shock proteins after getting hot. And so what there's a sort of a, this, this hormetic response, meaning the body is trying to anticipate and recover and adapt from a stressful event. And in so doing, it's going to affect these heat shock proteins. So that to me, I think is really fascinating. Uh, again, so if we're talking about health span, preserving your mental faculties as you age, and most importantly, I think, preserving muscle mass throughout lifespan. We know that sarcopenia and osteosarcopenic obesity mean the combination of muscle loss uh, with a combination of bone loss and fat gain is this triad that is very problematic and is very common in our society. And so we can attenuate that potentially uh, by helping to preserve lean muscle mass. And there's a lot of great images in this article that you're seeing now that help to support this idea that heat therapy and sauna bathing can help to attenuate or decrease uh, the, the, the muscle loss and the age-related muscle loss. So to me, I think that's, that's really fascinating, independent of the uh, cardiovascular benefits, independent of the endothelial function enhancement. So individuals with hypertension or elevated blood pressure have uh, dysfunctional endothelium. So if you think about, you know, your artery here, the, the endothelial layer is what's visible. Um, you know, if you, were, if you were a little microscope, you know, floating through your, your, your vasculature, um, th- those cells are influenced by uh, nicotine, by cigarette smoke, by toxins, by uh, fatty acids. And so those can become dysfunctional. And that leads to things like uh, erectile dysfunction. That leads to things like high, high blood pressure. And so 
the the contraction and relaxation of the of the arterial system uh, and the, and the the circulatory system when you get hot helps you exercise that critically important functional unit of your cardiovascular system called the endothelial cells. Now, so for men and women who are concerned about um, healthy sex life and all that, endothelial dysfunction also means ED, erectile dysfunction. So these are the same disease, okay? So this is important. I know a lot of men are care so much about testosterone, they should also care about their endothelium uh, and, and so forth. So sauna therapy might be uh, beneficial there. Okay, so we're going to get into some of the other benefits here uh, about the heart. We know that ultimately severe COVID-19 is a disease of the heart. It's a cardiovascular, it's a vascular disease. And one of the best things that you can do for your heart, independent of exercise and eating well and getting good sleep, is getting hot on purpose in the sauna. Okay, so just to summarize, uh, in terms of time, get to the point where you're sufficiently hot and maybe push it for another minute or two and get out. You don't want to get stuck on this thing, well, I heard Joe Rogan goes in for 27 minutes. Don't get into that. Everyone's a little bit different. And by the way, my friends, uh, you know, like I said, we have a finished sauna. We did the infrared sauna. We did all that. Uh, I will tell you through hundreds, if not thousands of sessions that I've gone through myself over the years, some days are better than others. Some days I can do on the top bench in our sauna, which gets up to 230 some odd degrees with the laoli and the steam and the essential oils in there. Some days I can bear that for 12 minutes. Other days it's like three minutes, right? So your stress response changes. And so therefore, please don't get stuck on this sort of Western allopathic prescriptive mindset of I have to do 20 minutes five days a week. It can be 15 minutes one day. It can be 23 minutes another day. You're going to be totally fine. Get to the point where you're like, okay, I've had enough. I'm going to take a break. Now, trust your intuition. Trust your body. Okay, don't try and push it. Okay, now the thing about these heat shock proteins is they can be increased. Their expression can be increased for up to 48 hours. And the, the delta, the change from baseline, uh, tends to get better and better in individuals as they become more acclimated to heat therapy. So what that means is you take a novice person who's never gone in a sauna, Okay, the, the delta, the, the relative increase in their heat shock proteins might be, say, to an arbitrary from 100 to 120, as this paper talks about, whereas an individual who's acclimated, it's going to actually increase to, say, from 100% to, like, 200%. Okay, so it's one of these things, just like with weightlifting or hiking, whatever, uh, as you get more fit, you can perform more work. And so this is really important um, in terms of making this a practice you know, I know not all of us have access, unfortunately, to a sauna or community saunas like uh, there is in Finland or Russia or things like that. But I think this should be part of our culture, which is which is pretty fascinating. So uh, really good data there. Now, let's finish off on the immune system. This is important. And we've, we've talked about cytokines and interleukins and things like that on this podcast. These are the signaling molecules that the immune system uses to communicate. Now, when you hear about interleukins, particularly interleukin-6, that brings up this, this sort of connotation of inflammation. But even exercise or moving your muscles increases levels of interleukin-6. Now, it turns out that transient increases in interleukin-6 are favorable. So when you move your muscles after exor during exercise and after, there's an increase temporarily in an interleukin-6. It's not permanent. It doesn't last forever. It's involved in the adaptations that are occurred uh, to help you get stronger and to have a better uh, next exercise session. It turns out that when you go in the sauna, it also increases interleukin-6 transiently. Okay, so this is going to be favorable. And part of this might be to help preserve uh, you know, muscle mass and prevent atrophy uh, and, and doing other things. That's one of the benefits. But another beneficial interleukin that's increased that's often not talked about is interleukin-10. So IL-10 is involved in affecting these T regulatory cells of your immune system. So a lot of us have this intolerant immune system where... During the springtime, we have allergies. If we have gluten or wheat or corn, our, our joints ache. We get a headache. We feel, you know, allergic. Um, there, there's a lot of, you know, peanut allergies everywhere. So our immune system is already just ready. Uh, it, it's intolerant. It's like a, that agitated parent that if you say one more thing, they're just going to explode. Like if the kid just asks for direction one more time, hey, mom, are we, are we there yet? And the, the mom just freaks out, right? So our immune system is much like that. Now, what helps to sort of balance and increase the tolerance in our immune system is a critical part of your immune system called the T regulatory cells. And these T regulatory cells are inducible. Some people have higher levels, some people have lower levels. It turns out that interleukin-10 
influences these t- critically important T regulatory cells. And as fate would have it, going into the sauna, getting hot on purpose helps to, guess what, improve the activity of interleukin-10 and the signaling of IL-10, possibly impacting the immune system and, and the T regulatory cells. So this is not to say that sauna therapy cures or prevents or treats disease. This is just to say that it has a favorable hormetic effect on the immune system, it turns out. So I think that that's pretty fascinating. But uh, as I mentioned, if you're into this and you like to understand the physiology and the science and you want to nudge a loved one like you're, you know, I'm always nudging my dad, you know, like, dad, you got to get a sauna. Come on, like, let, let's go. You know, I'm trying to get my mom to get involved in this as well, because for some people, they're like, well, I don't I don't know why I would want to do that. I don't like to get too hot. I don't like the heat. Right. They're like, well, there's all these benefits that accompany the practice. Plus, it's really relaxing. Your sleep is better. Uh, as the study talks about, it improves heart rate variability. We know that that is a proxy linked with uh, all these beneficial outcomes, reduce morbidity, mortality. So there's a lot of beneficial things, reductions in blood pressure, um, you know, improvement in, in brain health and cognition and all that. So uh, friends, definitely check out this paper by Rhonda Patrick. Hopefully you enjoyed some of the images here on the YouTube version. If you're listening in iTunes, please check out the show notes and you can see some of these images. Again, the title here is Sauna Use as a Lifestyle Practice to Extend Health Span, Ron and Patrick and Teresa Johnson. So thank you, uh, ladies, for putting that paper out there, for continuing to evolve this conversation and helping us to better understand the mechanisms linked to regular sauna bathing. I encourage you to make this a practice. Please check out hightechhealth.com. They are a great maker of low EMF uh, at home in Fred saunas. We had our unit for four years and then I, we sold it to friends and they're using it like every day. This thing is a workhorse because we use the heck out of it. So definitely encourage you to do that in a ventilated space. Remember, open your windows, get a, you know, get an electrician out there, install a fan so that you can get air because, um, you're going to sweat your butt off, which is part of the link to the health benefits as, Dr. Rhonda Patrick talks about in this from the blood, urine, sweat study by Dr. Steven Jenis in uh, Edmonton, Alberta, I think he is. Um, he did a study finding that sauna bathing in the urine and in the sweat enhances the excretion of cadmium, lead. Uh, what else? It was, was mercury part of them? I think it was mercury arsenic. So all of the heavy metals that are commonly increased in individuals living in near cities and drinking unfiltered water or guess what? They're excreted in the in the urine and the sweat uh, when you go in the sauna. So that's one of the health benefits as well. But along with those those you know unhealthy minerals and uh, sort of toxins, guess what? In the sweat, you release a lot of healthy things like magnesium, like zinc, uh, like sodium. So you want to replenish some of those minerals and electrolytes and all that. So I do just want to let you know one of the things that we've been using a long time is Myo Relax and Calm by MyoScience. What's unique about it is it has potassium. It has taurine. Taurine is an amino acid that's really intimately involved in electrolyte uh, and hydration health. Uh, It has L-theanine. It has GABA. So it really helps to not only support and replenish some of the lost minerals and electrolytes after the sauna, but it's very relaxing. So L-theanine and GABA. uh, And also has inositol as well. So you can check that out over at myoscience.com. Use the coupon code podcast. Uh, Oftentimes, if I'm doing multiple sauna sessions, I'll add in two capsules of Zinc Absorb, which is a zinc bisglycinate chelate, a very bioavailable form of zinc. Uh, And so you're getting your zinc, you're getting your electrolytes, and just sprinkle in some real salt, and you have pretty much everything covered there. And so you won't get cramps or things like that if you uh, are going to bed and you're sweating your butt off in the sauna. So definitely check that out over at myoscience.com. Be sure to hydrate yourself uh, after the sauna. And I do just want to mention there was one contraindication uh, with sauna use for men And that was potentially changing, in a negative way, sperm motility. So if you're trying to have a baby and your husband is cranking sauna sessions every day uh, and you're having challenges there, you might want to take a break there. So that was something that I thought was interesting. So I want to thank uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick for putting that uh, piece of literature in there. I was not aware of that. So um, that was one of the few contraindications known uh, with sauna bathing and getting hot on purpose is potential changes in sperm. And, you know, Sperm are getting hot. Um, maybe that that affects their lifespan, right? So if you're trying to have kids, maybe take a little a little break on the sauna uh, for a month or two, and uh, and so on. So, uh, friends, I'm grateful that you're still here. Thanks for hitting that like button. Thank you for subscribing and sharing this content. Hopefully, you found it helpful. And I really, really encourage you and all of my clients, anyone in my life, to get a sauna. Start to uh, save now 
for an infrared sauna. It can be a one person. Make it a practice. It will change your life and your body and hopefully enhance your longevity and health span. So we'll catch you in a future podcast down the road. Have a great one, guys. Bye now.